Join us on a journey of discovery as we delve deep into the heart of Lunjika, Mzimba, northern Malawi, in unearthing Malawi's ancient secrets. In the premiere episode of the Malawi Dig, we embark on a mesmerizing archaeological expedition. It's a captivating land rich in historical significance, where the relentless quest for knowledge knows no bounds. Our story commences with Professor Jessica Thompson and her team, not as daring adventurers, but as dedicated scientists. I'm Dr. Jessica Thompson. I'm an assistant professor of anthropology at Yale University in the United States. And I've been coming to Malawi to do archeology span since 2009. My first project was in Karanga, where I worked closely with Karanga Museum. And in 2016, we started thinking about exploring other parts of Malawi. So with that in mind, we came here to this area, the Mzimba district and the Kesitu Valley specifically. So the site where I'm sitting now is a site called Mazinga One. The locality is Mazinga. We call it One because it's the first one that we've been investigating. And we've been working here since 2017. 2016, we actually discovered the site during some surveys. There were only five of us, um, one of whom was uh, Joseph Tembo from Karanga Museum, whom you've already talked to. And he's the one who spotted it. So we were walking along this ridge here it was at the end of a very long survey, a very long number of days of survey. And, and he said, I see down there, there's a, a crack in the rock. And I said, I don't want to look at another crack in the rock. But he said, no, we should investigate. So we came and walked into this beautiful shelter. In the enchanting landscapes of Lunjika and Zimba, we witness a symphony of discovery. The team's hands work in harmony with the land, unveiling artifacts that have slumbered for centuries. With each swing of a pickaxe and delicate brush of a trowel, they connect with the past. As they uncover relics of bygone eras, we are offered profound insights into lives lived long ago. So one of the things that I try to do as a professor is always engage students in research as much as I possibly can. And here we have quite a mixed group. So we have students who are coming from Malawi, from a couple of different universities, but also we have a big international group of students. Some of them are from my own university, some are from other universities in the US, and then um, some of them come from other places in the world. So together we're, we're quite a mixed group. We have something like um, eight to 12 nationalities represented at any one time in the camp, which makes for quite an interesting set of uh, cultural mixes uh, in addition to the fact that we're all trying to learn something. But you add into that the fact that the majority of the people who are on this project are actually from the local community. And the students are working alongside in the same kinds of jobs as all of the community members. So they're in the lab together, they're here in the field together, and as much as possible, we try to build on the strengths of each person, regardless of if they are from uh, a university or from the community, or if they're more um, on the research-oriented professional side. So um, one of the benefits that I've really seen coming to us from that experience is that all of the students who come here to accompany me, they walk away feeling like just, like they've really felt a connection with not just the archaeology, which is of course why they originally want to come, but they feel like they felt a connection with the community and that they had an experience that was not something you could ever get if you went somewhere as a tourist, for example. They're really embedded within the group of people who live here and um, they form friendships. Uh, I see most of them still have Facebook friends and so on that go on for many years after the experience. So I would say that one of the benefits 
in terms of learning, it's not just learning the archaeology, but it's also learning how to cooperate with a diverse group of people. In the relentless pursuit of knowledge, challenges become opportunities. Every discovery brings with it a rush of excitement, a shared moment of revelation that resonates with the ages. As the sun bathes the excavation site in golden light, the artifacts unveil stories of ancient traditions, cultural practices, and lives interwoven with time. So one of my titles, in addition to being a, a professor, is that I'm a curator at the Yale Peabody Museum. And that experience has really helped me to imagine the role of something like a museum anywhere. And a museum doesn't have to be a structure. It can be. But it can also be a concept. And the concept includes um, the conservation of something, so that there's something for the future to see, future generations. Also education, so that people who can learn something from the preservation and conservation of things like objects, but also knowledge, intangible heritage. And the other piece to it is research. So my, my main goal is, is I'm, I'm here mostly as a researcher, but I'm also an educator. And um, as a curator at the museum, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking all the time about how these things connect to each other. You can't really do research without also having some sort of educational component because otherwise kind of what's, what's the purpose, you know, what do we learn, particularly with this kind of research. We're not inventing new technologies here, you know, we're, we're learning about the past. This project extends beyond archaeologists. It touches the lives of the local community. Observe as local participants transform into guardians of their heritage, forging connections with their ancestors through the artifacts they unearth. As you can see here what we are doing. First, when we found the place, like a cave like this one, uh, what we do is we come with uh, the equip uh, like total station and uh, and the prism uh, with uh, brushes uh, the tools for working that that we are away, able to work to excavate in such place. So first we do find the quads like it is this is a uh, quad of uh, of uh, this is one meter then meaning that it is two quads fifty centimeters. When finding a quad, we use a total station. The aim of excavation is removing a sediments a little layer by a little layer in order to follow whatever is found there on the ground. The findings are, uh, are coming like in different uh, layers. Like we have uh, some lithics. Lithics are just guessing it was used for cutting or else like removing the skins of animals or lady for, uh, for food. So when we found a quad, removing little sediments and any artifacts found on that uh, quad is remaining there. The Malawi dig isn't confined to archaeologists alone. Its impact resonates with the local community. Watch as local participants become guardians of their heritage, learning the techniques of the trade and forging connections with their ancestors. project. project the remnants of the past are not lifeless objects. They are the echoing voices of history, sharing tales of civilizations long gone. Come with us to appreciate the profound weight of archaeological significance as we explore the value of preserving these treasures for generations yet to come.
for instance, we have like provision, and um, of course, it's happening outside, but it's just within the Arab premises. And we also have like sorting of the artifacts through the sediments that are coming from the profession staff what? and then also staffing of the baggage tags that are being printed out so we staff each and every artifact that is uploaded from the site and then we also do the double checking of the artifacts that are supported just make sure that the finish bag should have like lithics and then it bonds and so on and so forth then I also do uh, things like uh, washing of the product fines uh, just to make sure that uh, they are clean and you see what is it after they are being cleaned then uh, we also do some kind of cataloging like bonds together, lithics together, shells together and then they get scanned yeah, just prepare for an analysis and the analysis is done uh, outside, that is uh, in US. As the excavation journey unfolds, its impact ripples outward, touching the lives of those who call this land home. Witness local participants as they evolve from curious learners to passionate stewards of their heritage, fostering a connection that transcends time. So, one of them, but process with every artifact lifted, we journey through the time, witnessing the practical and spiritual dimensions of an ancient world. The process of understanding these artifacts extends beyond the excavation site within the laboratory particular cataloging begins. Each artifact is documented, examined, and studied, revealing the intricacies of craftsmanship. My name is Amelia I've been working with Mark since last year. This is my second year. The reason why we are doing Malab is that we are doing a research of history. We are looking at how our past ancestors used to live. The food that they used to eat, their lifestyle, and why they were moving from one place to the other. That's all about it. As the day ends, we pause, reflecting on the day's revelations. Each artifact carries the weight of history, and in this quite moment, the past and the present converge, reminding us of the stories that endure across the ages. Our journey does not conclude with the setting sun. It marks a brief pause in our relentless pursuit of knowledge. As we bid farewell to the excavation site, we carry with us the anticipation of each new dawn, when we'll once again unearth the mysteries of unearthing Malawi's ancient secrets in Lunjika, Mzimba, Northern Malawi. <laughs>